Number 71, medical application, letter A. What is the intensity in watts per meter square of a laser beam used to burn away cancerous tissue that, when 90% is absorbed, puts 500 joules of energy into a circular spot 2 millimeters in diameter in 4 seconds? All right. So anytime I get a question like this, right, where literally, you know, they're throwing the kitchen sink at me, essentially, um, I like to just take it piece by piece. All right. So try to understand, take this and try to create a little mental imagery from it. So it says that now um, we have a circular spot. So why don't we just start with that? All right. We have a circular spot here that measures it told us uh, two millimeters in diameter. So the diameter here of the circle is going to be two millimeters. What's the radius? Why am I asking that also? Well, because you know that probably if I have to do a calculation here, you know that all the formulas we have basically relate radius, all right, to, I don't know, whatever area, surface area, volume, whatever, right? So you know that this area, excuse me, this radius is going to be one millimeter. Let's just get it out of the way, convert this into meters. So this is going to be 0 0.001. And you just move the decimal three places to the left, or you can divide it by 1,000, whatever you prefer. This would be the radius. Okay, now, we have then over this particular area, okay, we have 500 joules of energy, basically, right? We have 500 joules of energy, all right? Uh, it says 90 per, yeah, when it's 90% absorbed, right? So we have 90 joules of energy in this spot, okay, being absorbed. So let me highlight that. So basically in this, in this area, okay, in this area right here, nine, uh, excuse me, 500 joules of energy is being absorbed. Probably should have put that in blue, Would have made it a little better, but that's all right. That this part in blue, eh, you know what? Let me highlight it in blue. I don't know what color it's going to come out. What's this, purple? I failed that stuff in elementary school. Definitely not an artist if you haven't noticed by now. Um, oh, I got it right. Okay, so um, the actual amount of energy that's being absorbed then in this area is going to be 500 joules. But now they also tell us, right, so not only is 500 joules being absorbed in this area, but they're telling us over what amount of time that energy is being absorbed. So basically... Every four seconds, right, as it told us in the problem, every four seconds there is 500 joules of energy being absorbed, okay? So I'm going to say 500 joules is basically absorbed over, over four seconds. So now what I can start doing, all right, so I kind of have an idea here. Now what I'm going to start doing is basically maybe asking myself, well, the uh, joule in second, do I know anything that relates those two? Sure you do, right? Sure we do. Power. Power is energy per time. So power here is going to be 500, 500 joules per four seconds, right? So the power here is basically going to be, just take out the calculator, divide it 500 by four, and it's 125, right? So this is 125, okay? And that is in terms of watts, right? Or you could also represent it as joules per second. It doesn't matter, but I'm just going to call it watt. Okay, watts. So basically, the power, the power being supplied to this area, okay, is 125 watts. Meaning that there are, or there is, 125 joules being absorbed every single second. Okay? Now, that's great. Now I have power, I have a radius. How are those two related in terms of this problem? And they also want to know what's the intensity. And that's where another light bulb may go off. Well, wait a minute, I have a formula for intensity over here. It tells me that the intensity of a certain beam is going to be equal to the power of that beam divided by the area over which that power is applied. Okay? So to find the intensity then of this light beam that's being absorbed basically, right? Because, now remember, there's a difference between, as it told us in the beginning of the problem, there's a difference between the amount of energy that is being supplied by the beam and then that of the energy that's being absorbed. It's not a 100% absorption rate. It's a 90%. So you just have to be careful here. And that's why you want to think through this in detail. So basically, I'm going to say that the intensity of the uh, laser here that is being absorbed will be equal. Now watch the consistency is equal to the power that is absorbed 
divided by the area over which that power is absorbed. You see, once I start putting little subscripts here, instead of thinking of this as intensity is power over area, which is good to start, now you want to start getting more specific, right? The intensity of the wave or the light that is being absorbed is equal to the power of that light or that laser beam being absorbed, divided by the area over which that power is being absorbed. So now I can basically begin to plug in my values, right? So we know now that the, I can expand on the area, right? The area of what? Well, the area of a circle. We know the area of a circle, right? That's why I did the radius first, all right? Is simply, this is the power absorbed divided by the, uh, divided by the area, which is pi r squared. And this is the radius of absorption, basically. Now watch, just plug in. We have the power that is being absorbed. Right? Remember, this was the actual, this was the actual amount of energy that was being absorbed, as they told us, okay? It says it puts 500 joules of energy into a circular spot. So this is the energy that was absorbed, right? And then this is the power then that's absorbed. You can see I put all the little A's. So hopefully it sounds consistent. So this is now going to be 125, 125 divided by now pi times that radius of 0 0.001 squared. And what do we get? So 125 divided by then pi times 0 0.001 squared. So we get a value of about 3, 3.98, 3.98 times 10 to the, oh boy, 3, 7 it looks like. Hopefully my eyes counted those decimals right. All right, so this is then in terms of watts per meter squared. Now you might say, hooray, hooray, we found the answer. Well, not exactly. Why? Because this is the amount of uh, intensity being absorbed, okay? They wanted to know what is the intensity of the laser beam itself. In other words, reframing this, they want to know they want to know the intensity of the light beam or the laser beam being supplied. So now that means that well now I got to figure out how do I how do I make the connection between the intensity that it's absorbed by the eye or the cells, the cancerous tissue, and then the power and then the intensity uh, that is being supplied. So this is where now we have to use this ninety percent value. Okay. So it tells us that only 90% is being absorbed, right? So imagine a simple equation, a simple problem. If I told you this, you go to a store and the store, you, you have an item and it's going to cost $100. And the salesperson says to you, I'm only going to charge you 90% of that. What are you going to pay? Right? All of a sudden, the, the idea comes to mind, oh, I'm going to pay 90 bucks. This is simple, right? In other words, she could have said, or he could have said that the hundred dollars, I'm going to give you 10% off, right? 10% off of the 100, you know, you would have paid 90 or they could have said it's night. I'll give you, uh, I'll only, I will let you pay 90% of the original value, right? Which you would also then pay 90. So notice I can phrase the same thing in two different ways, right? So now the question is, how can I create a little math relationship between the original price and the final price? Okay. I don't know why it's F sub F. Not the frictional force, but the final price. Uh, in other words, what I can think about here is that this would be something like the price or the pa the intensity supplied. And this is kind of like saying the intensity absorbed. Okay. So either way, now, this is the original price and this will be considered the final price. So what's the formula? Well, I can take, I can do this basically. I can say that the uh Original power, the I keep looking at P as power. The original price, okay, is going to be equal to now the final price, okay, is equal to the final price somehow. But now, where does this 90% come into play? Well, we can think about it as a multiplication here, if you'd like, right? We can simply say that if I were to uh, divide this basically, or in terms of actually, it might be easier to think of in terms of uh, multiplying it. I'm going to now multiply the original price by 1 minus 0.1, right? So let me just actually move this. Let me just erase this now because you have the idea. Move this on over. So I can say again that it could be equivalent to saying something like this, that I'm going to take basically 1 minus 0 0.1 and then multiply that by now the original price and that'll equal the final price. What's 1 minus 0.1? Oh, it's 0.9 right? Oh, right. So this is basically, so you're telling me all I have to do is take 
the 90% basically, because this is 90%, it's just in terms of a decimal. Take 90% multiply it by the original price. So if you plugged in 100 here and you multiply it by 0.9, what are you going to get? You're going to get 90. Notice how that works out beautifully. So this is your formula, all right? This is an important skill. When you're not sure of, a, of the problem, you want to try to frame an easier problem to yourself. See if you can find that and see if you can figure out how you knew it. It's interesting because I can ask you that question. If the salesperson says it costs a hundred, but I'll, you know, you'll pay ninety percent of it, you're like, oh, right away, it's ninety bucks. But all of a sudden, I ask you to take what you did in your head, right, and try to create a math equation out of it. It's like what? That's a very, very useful skill to learn how to do. All right. So. Um, hopefully I've been trying to do that through a lot of problems. Hopefully you're picking up on some of the techniques. Now, what I need to do here is, uh, basically now, instead of talking about price and right, it's basically the same thing in terms of power. So my formula, excuse me, in terms of, uh, intensity. So basically I'm going to take the 0.9, multiply it then by the intensity that's supplied. Cause that's like the initial or the original intensity. And that's all going to equal the power that is applied to the cells or the final power or only the amount that is being absorbed. So here's my formula. So now I can finally calculate. So let's put this right here. So it's 0.9 times then the uh, power, why do I keep doing this? Intensity supplied is equal to the uh, intensity uh, that's absorbed. I, I know why, because it's kind of early still. So this is IA over 0.9 and we can now plug this all in right so the value here was 3.9 3.98 times 10 to the seventh all divided by then 0 0.9 and now we will find the actual amount of intensity all right that was supplied so we get that value divided by 0.9 and we have a value here of approximately uh, this is going to be 4.42 times 10 to the uh, should be again seventh all right and that's in watts Oh, that's in watts per meter squared. Okay, voila. So this is the intensity of the actual laser beam that is being supplied. And out of this full intensity that's being supplied, only this amount or 90% of this amount is being absorbed. So hopefully that should all now kind of make sense. So letter B, great, letter B. Discuss how this intensity compares to the average intensity of sunlight, about 700 watts per meter squared, um, and the implications that it would have for laser beam uh, entering your eye. Um, note how the amount of damage depends on the time duration of the exposure. Uh, so basically, I'm not really sure what, they, you know, discuss. So uh, this is small compared to this, right? This is much larger compared to this. Well, how many times larger is this compared to this? Well, it's going to be, you could, how do you find that? Just do a division, right? Just take this value here, the, I'll put this over here for part B. Just take that value, 4.42 times, oh, what? Times 10 to the seventh and divide it by now 700. Tell me what you get. Well, don't, don't actually tell me because I can't hear you, but you know what I mean. Uh, think about what you get. So this is going to be 63,150 six s or seven ish right so to one this means that the that the uh what do you call it this means sorry this means that the uh, light beam from the laser is sixty three thousand times more intense than the comparable intensity of sunlight so don't do that don't do not do this but if, if someone were to look at the sun, you know how you can cut, you know, when, uh, when you're younger, you're like, oh, let me see how long I can look at the sun and you're burning your retina. But, you know, if you were to look, you can literally look at it for maybe a fraction of a second, right? I mean, not long at all. Now, imagine that you're looking at something that is 63,000 times more intense, okay? So, you know, that's kind of, uh, <laughs> that's kind of crazy. So, in other words, if, if you were to uh, know the amount of time that you could stare at the sun to burn your retina, then the amount of time that it would take for the uh, laser beam to burn your retina would be one sixty-three thousandth of that value. It's basically like the inverse, okay? So, all right, that should hopefully discuss that. And uh, yeah, so guys, thanks for tuning in for this chapter. I appreciate it very much. Hopefully this helps. I look forward to moving on to more to help you out. 
And uh, if you can help us out at all, that would be much, much appreciated. It's just something small. Hit that subscribe button. It actually does make a tremendous difference uh, for us, all right? So I'd much, much appreciate it if you found any value in these videos. All I, all I would love for you to do is just literally click the button. So simple. Not even... Actually, it would take you one six... One six sixty-three thousandth of your no, I'm kidding. Um, so anyway, if you can, great. Uh, thank you guys. Take care.